Hello there. Um, Today we are going to talk about uh, chapter 15, but probably a little bit of chapter 16. Uh, then let's go ahead and start with what wave motion is, and what is sound, and things like that. So, wave motion, what is wave? Um, sound, it is a some kind of wave. Um, then how is it different from other kind of waves and so on and so forth. So pretty much we're going to cover um, those things, okay? So first of all, what what is wave? What is wave? It's, um, so the definition is going to, we'll come back to this one in a bit later. Um, wave is a motion of disturbance and at that disturbance transports us in space or or in, like or in a medium, then it transports energy. So, for instance, if you take like you know, uh, probably you might have used a slinky when you were a, when you were a kid. But if you have if you have a younger relative or acquaintance, you can you can check with it. Like you know, the slinky is like some kind of a spring and very smooth kind of thing. Like you know, if you drop it, if jumps and and all that um so uh, this is just as an example because it's purely um, represents or shows like what uh, what a wave looks like so if you take a slinky and then like for instance if you disturb it like if you push it like, you know put it on, an, on a plain surface or on a table uh, or or on the floor and then if you, if you push it on this end what what's going to happen is like you will you will be able to see uh, this area compressed, and then that compression is going to travel along the slinky, right? So I'm just going to just draw the slinky like this. Um, and let's say you know you pressed it, and now the slinky is going to be compressed around here and but what it will happen is like this is like a pulse you're giving like a pulse literally it's just a disturbance I mean there's nothing else in there then that pulse and you know you literally see it traveling in a certain interval I mean of course if you give it once just you can see it like travel and sometimes like if there is there is a barrier or like if it is against a wall or something you may have the chance to see the slinky coming back i mean not the slinky but you know the pulse that blue area or that blue compression that i'm just showing you so literally that that motion of disturbance that you see here is somehow what really represents uh, a wave so here what you need what you need to notice is like the slinky isn't going anywhere. What is traveling in here is the pulse. You know, it's just like this compressed area is going to go ahead and then compress the next region, and then the next region is going to have a less dense region. I mean, this way. And then, you know, that compression just literally you will be able to see it being, you know, transported uh, within that, within that medium. Okay, so, uh, the slinky is acting as a medium just to propagate or to transport that 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 pulse along along the way okay uh, so there are in general uh, you know mechanical waves and there are also electromagnetic waves like you can categorize them into a general kind so uh, as we said, wave is it some sort of disturbance, and you can disturb a medium. Okay, so there has to be some physical connection between the mechanism uh, through which uh, uh, adjacent portions of the medium influence each other. So, for instance, like a sound wave, if you take a sound wave, it's a mechanical wave. The air has to be disturbed, and then that air, you know, propagates in from 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 the person who's talking and then from the list to the listener it propagates through air right uh, so as we um, 
define waves, we said waves carry energy and momentum. Okay, so it's 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 a motion of the, the combined like you can say like it's a motion of disturbance that carries energy and momentum. Okay, so uh, there are in general like you can also categorize the waves into two kind of waves like one is a transverse wave and the other one is like a longitudinal wave okay you may also see a uh, wave formation in a string for instance like you hold this the, the, the string like probably you know it's tied against a wall or, or some kind of um, support and then if you flip the string on this side what will happen is like the vibration literally will travel okay in some cases like you know depending on the support that you have like that disturbance uh, will come back to you right so that's what literally uh, like a web is um, but if you if you do it like on a certain interval like for instance every second like one two so if you give that flip right then you may have a chance to create some kind of uh, a cyclic wave, right? So a wave that has like a certain pattern. Um, now, types of waves, as we said, like a transverse wave and of course, a horizontal or longitudinal wave. So in a transverse wave, for instance, like I was mentioning about Slinky and like some kind of spring, of course. Um, uh, but it, the transverse wave can can be better represented by uh, a thinner kind of uh, spring, right? Instead of like um, a slinky. A slinky is usually you know, with a bigger diameter. Um, so if if you take that, like you know, you let your friend to stand on hold it, hold hold this spring on this side, and then on this side, if you flip or move um, this the the spring up and up and down right just once then you will notice that like the 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 disturbance being moving like this you you will literally be able to see it uh, so now in this case what you can see is like then the wave is traveling Anyway, the web is traveling from here, from left to, from left to right. Okay, so it's traveling with a certain velocity. Uh, but something that you would like to notice is like this. So, you know, as you see here, the spring is moving up and down. Right, spring is moving up and down. The spring is moving up and down. Okay, whereas the wave is moving in the horizontal direction. So the way the spring moving, which is in this direction, and the way the wave is moving, okay? So we're at the wave is moving in this direction, okay? So they're perpendicular to each other, right? So this is the wave, whereas this is, you know, the spring force. So those two are moved, you know, they are they are crossing each other, and as a result, this this kind of waves are known as transverse waves. Okay. The other type of waves are longitudinal waves, or sometimes known as horizontal waves. Um, this can really uh, well represent it like using a slinky, like a, a larger diameter spring. Of course, slinky is like it has a very uh, very low kind of uh, uh, spring constant like that means you, know, you can stretch it um, very easily uh, then if, if you if, if you hold and then like move your hand back and forth right instead of up and down as in the previous case what will happen is like you're going to compress a certain region of the spring like for instance the ones right next to your hand will be compressed, right? And this part and this compressed region is going to go ahead and then compress the next region, leaving, you know, its path a uh, little stretched 
and then of course that compressed again is going to travel that way okay so uh, you will be able to uh, see that and if you if you really do this in a certain interval like in every second or in half a second or something like that then pretty much you will be uh, able to create a very nice kind of uh, pattern kind of uh, trap or disturbance uh, and then that disturbance carries energy and momentum and as a result you are forming wave so this kind of movement like as you can see uh, that literally the disturbance or the pulse is moving in this direction right and at the same time at the same time your your hand your hand is moving in the same direction right when you are giving the pulse so both are like in parallel so like you can you can say like this is this is the the pulse that is moving in that direction and of course if you look at like the spring it's also moving in the same direction so if both are moving in the same direction then this kind of wave is known as longitudinal waves okay this type of waves are known as longitudinal waves uh, so it as, as, as i mentioned it earlier like if you if you have uh, a string you can also uh, use a string or something like that and then you know you just plank it or um, and then if you plank it like on at a regular interval um, then what you are going to inform it form is like you will form wave uh, it's just like a well patterned kind of wave um, so then like let's say you have you plank it first the string so when you plank it it's going to move as the way you see it, like in this brownish color if you wait for let's say one second or something like that and then you you flip for a second time then now the wave is traveling like using following the the blue pattern right so as you can see here there is a time interval there will be a time interval and you know there will be a time interval between the first one and the second one right then there will be a distance traveled by the wave right so as you can see like from one place to another place okay so that means this wave formation has its own speed and if you if you do it on a cyclic period that means like every one second or every certain time then you are going to have a period for the wave that means like it's going to be following a certain kind of cyclic or cycle um, so in general as you can see like that's how waves normally travel from one location to another location it's going to have its own vector velocity and it's going to have a certain time and so on and so forth so in general there are a few terms that probably you would like to you know define here so there are the bottom parts of the wave right when that wave travels right, then it's going to have a bottom or or the lowest point that point is known as trough okay and then there are also upper points because it you know the the, the wave normally moves in some kind of um, call it like a sine curve or something like that okay um, then you know then it has also upper points like you know max tip points and then these points are known as crests okay so those points are crests of the wave all right so now as we tried to mention it a little earlier what if uh, you give it like a very steady stream of pulses like you know if it is like a very steady pulse kind of thing like let's say you know you have a vibrating blade um you connect the vibrating blade uh to a to a spring so probably this vibrating blade is like it's powered right so if it is power if it has like a certain kind of power that means it can really provide um this thing or this vibration in a certain time okay 
usually like if it is like um, reg you know in a, in a lab we we usually conduct uh, using the alternate current itself okay that's like a reasonable rate um, pulse of like 60 hertz um, now when you do that like when this guy vibrates like if you look at the string you will you you will be looking at this spring and then it's going to form a very nice kind of um, harmonious kind of travel of the the wave okay and as you can see like there will be a constant kind of distance from the original play the original location of the string to its maximum and minimum points okay so this is the maximum point or the crest that we called it and this is the minimum point where you have the trough but that distance from the undisturbed or equilibrium position to the maximum or to the minimum point is known as amplitude okay so this is the amplitude of the wave all right so keep in mind so far what we saw is um, the wave has a speed it has an amplitude um, and so on and so forth so now as we tried to mention it earlier, like if the pulse is regular, the pulse that, that you're sending is like at a certain interval of time, right? Then that means like there will be a cycle. So what's going to happen is like for the wave, it's going to take some time to travel a certain period or a certain cycle. Let's say, you know, let's, let's ignore this one because it's not, the fixed point but we can start from this point if you look at like the wave still the wave is going to travel like this even though the the string is moving up and down then the wave is going to have that v or velocity now now the question is like the wave will travel from this location then to the next peak position okay then during that period like it's completing one full oscillation right one full oscillation then the time taken by the by by the wave to complete one full oscillation right is known as period so time for full oscillation or complete for a complete oscillation okay is called period and this period is almost always represented by per case per case t okay so during this period if you look at it the wave travels from from crest to crest okay and that distance particularly we call it and it's regular if if the pulse is regular and then that distance between crest to crest or trough to trough is going to be constant okay for that for, and then that constant distance from pulse to pulse to uh, is known as is known as wavelength okay wavelength and then in physics it's commonly represented by greek letter lambda okay so this is distance traveled by the wave you can put it that way if you want to distance travel um, distance traveled uh, within t or by t amount of time okay so as a result what would happen is um, if you try to find the speed of the wave we know that um, this the wave takes uh, a period 
to travel to travel one wavelength, right? Let me write this first. Okay, so the very definition of like average speed, since we're defining like constant kind of um, speed for the wave, then we can just simply find you know the distance and how much time is elapsed. Then that's literally going to give you the, the velocity, right? The average velocity. So, but here instead of measuring like how much, how much. Um, total distance the wave traveled and how much time it took instead of that like you know there is there is a time that you know that like to complete one full oscillation and that is called period and you know the time the distance traveled by the wave within one period which is the wavelength right so therefore you can find v by just simply applying lambda over t okay so you know, make sure that you write this formula in your in your in your data table or in your formula sheet. So um, then lambda over t. Uh, then, but there is something we would like to define here: another physical quantity known as frequency. So since t is a period, that means we are measuring time. The psi unit of t is going to be what? going to be seconds right then but how many repetitions of the wave happens like for instance you look at the wave here and let's say in one second the wave completed so much so much cycles right so then if you do that literally what you're defining is frequency there is a mathematical or a physical quantity known as frequency then frequency is how many cycles are completed per how many cycles are completed per period in one week like so I mean in one second rather not in one period then as a result frequency is equivalent to one over a period okay so we said that the velocity of a wave is lambda over a period right so therefore if you rewrite this let's say as you know those two are the same as one lambda multiplied by one over t but one over t is now the new physical quantity that we are introducing known as frequency so there is a like the velocity of a wave can be calculated as lambda multiplied by frequency and this uh, unit of frequency is hertz okay spelled as like this and abbreviated as per case per case h and lower case z that is what this uh, unit of frequency is okay so si of frequency okay all right where did it go then we already defined amplitude amplitude is the maximum displacement of the string above the equilibrium position okay how high the the the, the, the string moves okay from its equilibrium position then that's what the amplitude the amplitude is okay so you know this is the negative of the amplitude like if you are using the wave equation or something like that then you will incorporate those positive and negative signs but for now yeah, it's just defining it then we already mentioned the wavelengths it's the distance between two successive uh, crests or two uh, successive um, troughs okay then how about a, a rock like if you if you take a rope so the equation that we just saw was like a general equation it's just a general equation that you can apply for any kind of wave because it just simply used the definition of uh, speed or velocity from kinematics like speed is equal to distance over time but if what if the distance is a wavelength and the time is the period then therefore the speed of the wave will be calculated as um 
as wavelength divided by period, right? Then, but now, like, if, if you take a special kind of um, material, let's say rope, stretch rope, or or a guitar string, right? And then if you flip it, or if you plunk it, right? What would happen is like, it just like somehow it vibrates. And then of course it, it has a chance that to form some kind of uh, a wave, okay? So then that wave, of course, it's going to propagate, right? Then when it propagates, like there is a derivation related to it, but it's a long story. So it has a wave, right? And then it's going to travel, right? That wave is going to, to travel. So the pulse, we usually, you know, we have been calling it a pulse. So therefore, you can find the speed by just simply applying this formula, okay? So this formula normally represents the amount or the speed at which the pulse travels in a string is equivalent to the square root of the force or the tension in the string. Okay, you know how tight this the the how tight how tight this string is, right? That is determined by the tension in the string, then divided by Greek letter mu, where this mu represents the linear density we call it. Okay, linear density. Okay linear density not unlike the volume matrix density that we discussed in uh, like back in chapter nine okay so then how do you calculate it instead of like the usual definition of density that we know density equals um, mass over volume here it's going to be mass over length okay so uppercase l represents length and m represents mass okay so so therefore the speed depends only upon the properties of the medium the properties of the medium means like this okay this we call it inertial property okay because it involves mass and the length of it then interference of wave like how waves are interfering and so on and so forth i mean if you guys like like to uh, take a pause here and probably you know try to solve a couple of questions um that's also another another way to do it like for instance i don't know if you want to we can go ahead and then solve probably a couple of a couple of problems from your textbook um you know maybe it's better to do it that way uh, so in your textbook e Let's, let's let's solve like E1. Okay. Um, let's list out what our given parameters are. I'm going to read the question for you. Problem states, suppose the water waves coming into a dock have a velocity of 2.5, 2.1 meter per second. So uh, the velocity of the wave is given as 2.1 meter per second. and has a wavelength of 5.6 meter. Then the question is, what the frequency of those waves meet at the dock? So, okay, frequency. Frequency means like, how many of those waves are coming per second? Like, or in one second, some kind of, um, um, so, you know, you measure it in Hertz. So the first thing is like, you will go ahead and find the solution. Then the only wave equation so far that we saw is like how to find the speed of a wave. And that equation is its speed can be calculated as frequency times lambda. Okay, this, this is a Greek letter lambda. Spell like that. Okay, so V equals F times lambda. Then you need to find frequency because we are looking for frequency. So therefore, 
So I saw that frequency, just divide both sides by lambda. Then the lambda will be eliminated. Then you'll have an equation for frequency, which is V over lambda. Okay, so therefore your frequency is going to be V is 2.1 meters per second. And the wavelength is 5.6 meters. Then from there, your frequency is going to be 0 0.375. Okay. Um, then, you know, if you do unit elimination, this is like, right? Meter by meter cancels out. And, and the final answer is cycle per second. And that cycle per second, it, like you see, you, you're left with just a second, per second, actually. Then that this how many of cycles of the wave happens in one second that's what it means so the answer is um, 0 0.375 hertz another question probably e2 something similar just simple E2 states, suppose that weight of waves have a wavelength of 3.8 and a period of 1.7. What is the velocity of the wave? That's even easier. Um, so, and the wavelengths of the wave is given. It says like 3.8 meters. And the period is given, uppercase, which is 1.7 seconds. Then you're asked to find the velocity. The very definition of the velocity of a wave, V equals lambda over T, right? You know, don't get confused. This is the same as lambda times frequency or frequency times lambda okay but here it's the period that is given so therefore we are better off using this equation so the result v is going to be 3.8 meter over 1.7 seconds put those values in your calculator then you should get like 2.24 meters per second Okay. Then we already found frequency in the first question. In the second question, we found velocity. Probably let's do one more example that shows how to find the wavelength. Then there is a problem E3 in your textbook. It states the following a longitudinal wave. So, as usual, our given parameters. A longitudinal wave on a slinky has a frequency of 6 Hz. So, frequency is given. Let's see. If, if, if you get a habit of like reading and taking your given parameters, you know, always is the best way to do a problem like instead of you know going through it and then come back again to pick up the values but instead along the way you can pick up your given parameters and the speed of 1.5 meters per second now the question is what is the wavelength so you can start from v equals frequency times lambda then you can isolate lambda by dividing both sides by frequency. Right? This F cancels out, then you have a new equation for for lambda, V over frequency. Okay? Then you substitute your values. V is 1.5 meters per second. And this is 6 hertz. Keep in mind, heard this 
the same as 1 over a second, right? So therefore, 1 over a second here cancels out with the heard part. Okay. Then we'll be left with mirror. Then your lambda value, if you, if you plug in the values in your calculator, you get 0 0.25 mirror. Okay. You know, don't, don't, don't be alarmed if you see 25 centimeter at the answer. The, those both values are the same. Okay, one is in meter, the other one is in centimeter. All right, so those, those are the type of questions that usually you know, revolve around. Um, waves okay so let's go let's go ahead and then get back to um, where we were and of course probably we will also solve a rock question um, i think let me find one from your text yeah so probably let's solve a problem that involves like this um, this equation like in a rock okay So there is a, there is a problem. It's e six. E six says. Uh, let me read it. Suppose a guitar string has a length of zero point six four. So length. We represented it in the slide, if you saw, like we represented it as L, is your 0.64 meter. And a mass for that is 4.3 gram. And of course, if you convert this to kilogram, it will be 0 0.0. 0 0.043 kilogram right the now question a is asking you like what is the mass per unit length so what is m over l equals so for that you just simply you know, we represent th that mass over l by greek letter mu like similar to micro remember but here it has a different definition so then mu is what mass over mass over length then you already know your mass which is 0 0.0043 kilogram it's always best to put things like in their um, si units there so then the length is 0 0.64 meter. Then at the result, your linear density. If you do a proper calculation, you get 0 0.0067. The units, kilogram per meter. Okay. That's, that's the answer for For the first part of the exercise, okay. Then it has part B. Part B is asking you what is the speed of the wave on the string? If If the tension is in the string is 75.6 newton. Okay. So which equation are you going to apply? We're going to apply V equals square root of force or tension divided by by the linear density of the string. Okay. That's inertial property of this term. So V will be square root of 75.6 
Newton. Divide that by mu, which is 0 0.0067 kilogram per meter. Everything is understood. Okay. So if you simplify this, then approximately your V value, if you kept everything in a psi unit, then you're going to get the psi unit of velocity. The psi unit of velocity is meter per second. Okay. I, I mean, some of you may ask like, oh, how, how did you end up with like Newton per kilogram per meter? How is that even equal to meter per second? You can do you can do a unit analysis. It's 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 your wish. If you want, like just just to show you, this is just as an extra. Let me use a different color, maybe the blue color. You know, Newton means what? Newton means kilogram meter per second square, right? And then there you have divide that by kilogram per meter, right? So remember, so the factor has to be divided right here. You know, that's where the units are. That's where the upper unit and the lower units are, you know, are divided, right? So dividing one fraction by another means multiplying it by the reciprocal. Reciprocal means M over kg, right? The reciprocal of this part. So what will happen? The kilogram eliminates with kilogram. Then you have meter times meter. Meter times meter is meter square over second square. But keep in mind, this is under square root for our problem. Square root of m squared is m. The square root of s squared is s. That's why we end up like kilogram or newton per kilogram per meter under square root is the same as meter per second. Okay. I know this. This is just 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 as an extra work. Like if you ever question like how how that you need. Newton per kilogram per meter is the same as meter per second. Okay, it's, that's how it is. Um, so let's get back to the slide and let's try to wrap up the theory. Then some other properties of waves is interference. Interference is a wave property. Like if you have two waves and like, you know, in the somehow if those two waves move in a certain direction and then if they cross each other if one path through each other without being destroyed um, sometimes uh, but sometimes they can also you know uh, eliminate one to another okay so that means we call that interference of wave so you know one wave interferes with another wave all right um, so when two or more waves, uh, traveling waves encounter each other while moving through a medium, the resulting wave found by adding together the displacements of the individual waves point by point. Okay. So now if you take two waves here, you have a blue wave and then you have a green wave. If those two waves like meet or one passes over the other, right? So if you look, if you look at here, here, it's like, you know, crest to crest, uh, trough to trough, right? So, and then it's like, what, what we have here is like, you know, the two waves are meeting crest to crest, trough to trough, crest to trough, crest, trough to trough, right? So, if they perfectly match, then that means like they are called in phase, okay, All right? And then they have the same same wavelength and the same frequency. Then when those two waves meet, what 
will be the resulting wave is going to be like you know twice as much at the amplitude okay whereas the frequency remains the same okay so this kind of interference between two waves is known as constructive interference as you see it in the heading okay that will result in a higher amplitude but the same frequency situation but what if two waves are interfering or passing one over the other like with the same frequency right so the same frequency means the same number of cycles happening per second but what if they are 180 degrees out of phase it means what if they are matching crest to trough right trough to crest crest to trough trough to crest right what will happen what's going to happen is like this is a destructive interference like so this amplitude and this amplitude this is a negative amplitude that you have here right the positive amplitude here right if you add a to minus a what the result will be zero so therefore what are you going to get like a muted wave nothing okay this is destructive interference this type of interference is known as destructive interference okay so having said that like we can go ahead and then move to um, sound waves so sound waves sound waves are longitudinal waves uh, because you know as the we're going to see it like in the following in the following in the following slides then if you take a, a tuning fork you know a tuning fork is like something that looks like this shape or or a wine glass it's a very common thing like you know it's just um, at a wedding or at certain ceremony people normally um, ring ring uh, you know um, a wine glass like you know by heating it with uh, with a fork or with uh, with something right so when 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 you hit that tuning fork if you have never seen a tuning fork in your life that's that's totally understandable uh, but a wine glass is a good example so what is happening is like you know the the glass vibrates right? when when you hit it with something that's that's what literally is happening so when it vibrates so this is what is happening so when it vibrates like it compresses the air right next to it okay it compresses that air right next to it and like when you know, vibration means it's not like moving in this direction and then staying in that direction right but it will go to the opposite direction as well right whenever anything vibrates that's what is happening so what will happen is like when it moves to the to to moves away from from the air next to it what happens is like you will have a low dense region of air of course right so then as the tuning fork continues to vibrate what is happening is like it's going to create a succession of uh, compression or high density regions and low density regions right so that high density region and low density region and then it's going to travel through the air okay so then that succession of like compression and rarefaction sometimes we call it then that's going to form what we call like a nice wave and that's like a longitudinal wave why we call it longitudinal wave like as we defined it earlier the wave travels in this direction and the air particles are also moving in this direction at least you know in this direction and in that direction of course they are pushing one next to it and so on and so forth okay then that's 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 how a sound wave is formed whether it's like in your vocal cord like in your throat right 
So that's that's how you normally form like a sound wave. And that's why like they are longitudinal waves. The speed of sound commonly at room temperature, it's common to approximate it at 340 meters per second. Okay, at 340 meters per second. So, um, so now like you get like the overall idea of like what's happening in a, uh, like in a, what do you call it? What, what wave is and what is frequency, what is wavelength uh, and other things. Um, so now probably you know, we'll go ahead and then maybe try to solve a couple of more problems. So let's do E4 now. So E4 in the textbook, it says, wave on a rope is shown in the diagram. What is the wavelength of the, the, this wave? If the frequency of the wave is four, what is the wave speed? So this is what they gave us. Like, so the drawing is just, it's just a drawing. So you're, you're required to understand this. So it's given like this. So the distance from here, I guess, up to here. Uh, I'm trying to make it as perfect as possible. Okay. Then now you are asked to find the wavelength. Part A is asking you, what is the wavelength of this wave? This is like more of more or less like an interpretation of what is given okay so you know you, you, you look at this and what is a wavelength in general a wavelength is like you look at a wave and then as we said as we defined it like it is from crest to crest or from trough to trough okay so if you see here, you have within this, you have two well-defined troughs and well-defined crests. Or, you know, if you, if, you, if you consider this point, you can also say like from here, so I'm going to put it as bold. Here, this distance also is the same as the distance between two crests or the distance between two troughs. So as a result, like from here to here, you have one wavelength. Then from here to here, you have another wavelength. So that means within that five meters of distance, you have two wavelengths. So you have one lambda here, you have another lambda here. So there is a, like you have five meters in two lambda then you divide that by two right then as a result you have lambda which is equal to 2.5 okay that's 2.5 not six it looks like six it's better to write it clearly Five. Then part B. Asks. What is the speed of. What is. The wave speed. If frequency is 4 hertz. So frequency equals 4 hertz. And V equals what. Okay. So it's just like apply the very definition of V equals lambda times frequency. So your lambda is 2.5 meters. 
the new frequency is 400 then v equals 10 meters per second Okay. Uh, probably a sound question. Uh, we're going to still keep it very, very simple. E10. E10 states the following, says what is the frequency of a sound wave with a wavelength of 0 0.56 meter traveling in a room temperature. So given, so speed of sound at room temperature is 340 meters per second. A wavelength is 0. 5-6 meters What is the frequency? Frequency equals what? So this is a wave question just literally but the given parameters are in terms of in terms of sound wave So solution We already derived an equation for V earlier and we ended up with frequency equals v over lambda so there is that your v is going to be your frequency i mean v is 360 meters per second divide that by 0 0.56 meter so meter cancels out with meter then frequency is if you do that and you're going to get about 607.1 per second per second means hertz okay so with this we conclude our today's topic and of course uh, probably like we we'll, this is the conclusion of chapter 15 rather um, it's not the conclusion of like the uh, the week's material uh, we will need to involve some kind of electromagnetic wave uh, something related to that um, we're gonna get to that material like probably in, in a bit later or in in the next video okay all right thank you very much take care